Like, like I said earlier, a family and a team that plays hard and is willing to do anything to win and get to the next level. I think all our guys have, have a fearlessness about them that you know you can't match. As great of, great of a family we, we are, we're from rough areas and we all know how important it is to stick together and have each other back. Russ, how crazy has this journey been for you for the last three years, going from a guy who coached wanted to transfer to Manhattan maybe at one point, and now, you know, he could be the most outstanding player of the NCAA tournament to lead this team to the national championship. You know, that's, 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 a, that's a blessing. And on top of that, I, I've just been really lucky to have, have that, you know, done to me. And, I, I'm actually kind of lost for words because I never thought I would be in this position or this situation, and and I'm here. And like my dad always, you know, used to say, you know, you're gonna get what you ask for. And every time I used to ask him, like, why isn't nobody doing this about me? Why isn't the team I'm on winning? Or why is that? Or I want to play this game. I want to go here. And he said, you're always going to get your opportunity. You're always going to get what you ask for. So just go out there and make the most of it. So this is this has really been great for me. Have you changed Coach Patino in the process? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say I did because I don't know how he would react to that. <laughs> but if you ask him, uh, I, I wanna, maybe I'll say, yeah, maybe he's a little bit more, you know, a little bit more laid back <laughs> and uh, a little bit more open, I guess. But it's, always, it's cool playing with Coach. A guy's going to push you and a guy who who not only wants the best for you, but wants the best for the team and you as well. So he gets the most out of me every time I'm on the court. I try to make my production level as um, as high as possible every time I'm out there. And I, I think that's what's really important. Coach, I mean, Coach, Coach <laughs> talked about with, with Kevin being out, your rotations change and you guys worried about ball trouble. Is there any concern about fatigue for you and Peyton going into Monday night, especially with the way you're trying to pressure Michigan? I don't think the fatigue is really a, um, a problem with us because uh, we our practices are worse than the games. The games are on North Day, but for for the most part, it's definitely just you know staying out of foul trouble or just realizing that as even as hard as you play, you know Kevin Ware is is not is not going to check in for you, and that's a kind of tough pill to swallow because. You want to play hard, and, and you know fatigue will like set in at some point. Not saying we're just robots, but it will set in, but not to the point where we can't perform. But when you have a fresh body, Kevin Ware coming in, and you can kind of take your foot off the pedal just a little bit, it relieves so much pressure. And I think yesterday, that, that was kind of what we were missing at a certain point in the game, but Tim Henderson did a great job of stepping up in that, in that matter. Does it, does it help now you've gone through a game without it to kind of understand maybe where you have to go into Monday night? I think so. And, it, and it's always good to, you know, win a game and, and learn a, a lesson like that. So uh, knowing that, you know, Kevin Ware is not going to check in, knowing the pace we have to play, knowing what has to be done, that's, that's going to be cool. Russ, I don't know uh, how much you know about Michigan yet. I know Coach has said it's going to be tough for one day of preparation, but in seeing them throughout the year, what or who do you see as the biggest strengths on that team? Well, obviously, you know, Trey Burke, National Player of the Year, and uh, he's, 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 he's awesome. He's seven assists, 19 points, two steals. He can't, can't knock a player like that and makes, makes the three-pointer from, from the distance. Hardaway, 6'6", six, six, you know, swing man. He could really, really shoot, really athletic. Glenn Robinson is the same. And Nick, my, one of my best, best of friends since prep school, he, he's going to be really awesome. He can shoot, he can go off the bounce. They're really great. And then you got McGarry down there. So I think they pose a lot of problems for, for us with their sets and their height and depth. But I think if we handle our game plan, we, we should be ready. Have you and Nick talked throughout this tournament? And did you talk last night at all? I actually spoke to Nick. I forgot who they played uh, to get to get to the uh, final four, but I spoke to him during that game. Uh, he he hit like he was like six for six on the three point line. I, I texted him at halftime. I spoke to him, you know, at the banquet. You know, we were really close. I spoke to him throughout the whole season, really. And it's it's just really awesome, to, you know, to be with a guy. I remember when he was 15, 16 in prep school, and he was doing the things he was doing to to us, and we were 18, 19, and. I, it didn't really sit in with me until I remember how old he was, and he's he's really an awesome player. Safe to say you don't want to see any of that against you tomorrow. <laughs> Safe to say. What you talk about? Well, we do this thing after every game. We haven't done it throughout the tournament really lately, but 
Coach P does this good, bad, and ugly thing with the games. The good plays, the bad plays, and the ugly plays. And for some reason, every game we have about two good clips of good plays and then about 50 bad clips of bad plays. <laughs> and you know, it could, we could win by 30 and everything would be bad. And I don't know, I don't get it sometimes, but you know, today we watched all the bad clips, uh, just hard defense. How many bad? Part of the whole game was bad, <laughs> like, according to him. And you know, so it was, it was pretty, you know, we watched what we could have done, what we could have done better. You know, which I'll say was great teams. Great defensive team. They did, you know, everything right against us, and you know, really took us out of the game. And we couldn't make shots. Uh, luckily for Luke and Tim, you know, really stepped up big, and Montrez and Shane came to play, and they really pulled us out on yesterday. And you know, for us, we just, you know, talked about our defensive rotations, talked about you know, our defensive stance, and you know, this is the second game that you know we really didn't play that great defensively, you know, or we didn't play that great defensively. And, you know, Wichita State, we can play that great defensively. And we got to do a better job of, you know, making rotations, making a better job of staying our defensive stance and, you know, making the right plays. What were we played uh, very well the three point line shot last night. They made probably, that's the most three point shot they made on us last night. But I'm not sure, but I think it is. But we play, uh, we put in the three point line very well and uh, we just get on the glass. Uh, that's good defense because Coach always tell us like you guys need to win the game defensively, not offensively. If you stop your opponent, you won't have any problem to score. And I think you're absolutely right. When you play defense, everybody gets involved. Like you don't think about offense. But when you struggle offensively, excuse me, you you have that time for me. Take a time. Could you talk about Mitch Pizarro a little bit, the challenges he might present and how he's going to go? Oh, he's He's a great player, you know. I watch him a lot, you know. He's a good passer, good scorer. I play with that energy, but uh, he's he's a good player overall. Is there any key to stopping him? One one thing that you have to do? I uh, just play hard. That's all I need. That's all you can do. Just uh, you know, try and change my game. Just uh, be me and play. That's all I can do. And uh, there's nothing else you can do. People are very different. People are uh, different skill set, and uh, you know. People are strong and weaknesses, and uh, just probably watch film and see what, what is his weakness. Okay. So you're saying at the end of the day, you'll you'll worry about you'll ask yourself did it, did things go perfectly today? What was your what did you think last night when you went to bed? What did you what, what, what did you kind of? I, I think play? I think last night I didn't have my head game, but coming to this game, I knew that it was going to be very hard to score. Coach told me the only way you can score before the game, he said, you turn around, jump shot. But it's gonna be hard to get in the paint, and you see it. I was right, and uh, they just play in the paint. He said, "No, you can just, just uh, you need to play for the team now. Just like set a screen, get on the glass, you go on the ball, and uh, get other people open. When you got the ball on the top, take your time and be a facilitator, trying to find people. Uh, but uh, coming to this game, I knew it was going to be uh, very hard to score. And you said your teammates, that you guys are so close that if someone has a bad day, someone. The other teammates were there afterwards to kind of get you up. What did your teammates say to you uh, last night? Nothing. There was, we won. <laughs> that's, that's two games left. There was like probably 300, 400 teams in, in, in this country. And we have four teams left and we won the game. Somebody had, we don't have time to complain or anything. <laughs> you know, we, we won. That's all count. We came with the victory. Not last week, but. I didn't, he really didn't talk about it. I mean, after the game was won, and we just won, nothing else to be talked about. I mean, when we was down, he did come in the huddle and say, we need to stop. And he, you can hear the, the aggression in his voice. Really? Uh, yeah. Yes. Shane, can you talk about what makes your pressure defense so tough for opponents? And along those lines, Michigan had some good success against DCU's pressure. Mm -hmm. well, Do you think um, you're at a different level, though? Yeah, I think so. I think we'd have. In my eyes, I don't know what nobody else has, but in my eyes, I think we're the most uh, well prepared and understand the offense of uh, offensive press. Like for them, getting the ball in, I think we understand that more. And uh, just being in shape, I think that helps physically and mentally in shape. And uh, just knowing where to where you can get your steals at, uh, it's not gonna happen off jump, but like just throughout the game, the survey where. They like to go to and where their weak points are and uh, in the press. So I mean, so you can get your steals and who, who 
who you want the ball in the, uh, like on our team, who, who you want to have the ball and bringing it up. Uh, obviously, Trey Burke will have it, so we got the Russ and Payton have to, you know, survey him a little bit just to see what moves he like and where we can catch him at. So we'll be good. The Louisville branch of the L1C4, you heard Coach talking about it, and you know, he's got a chance to win a championship with another school, and just think regardless first, I mean, just, what does that mean to you, you know, that brand? And, uh, I mean, a lot. Uh, I mean, because the, the old saying, we play for the name on the front, not the name on the back, and I mean, I think we all take that to heart, uh, because everybody could cheer, but as you can see last night, uh, Tim Henderson, uh, Stephen Van Dries, came in, Luke Hancock came in off the bench and gave us tremendous minutes and uh, down the clutch gave us some big plays and I mean we follow that model very well and we're going to stick with it to the other side. Do you look at maybe the success that Syracuse forwards had like CJ Fair last night and, and maybe think that there's something that your forwards can exploit against Michigan? Yeah, that's one thing we got to look at on film just to see where they got their easy points at and where they found a weakness in their uh, defense. And I think we do a pretty good job because everyone, everybody on this team can uh, play and score. So we should be good. Shane, I, I know you weren't there for the first year, but you know you went to the Bahamas with this team. How crazy is it that Russ Smith, who coach, wanted to transfer to Manhattan at one point? The guy is one game from maybe being the most outstanding player of this tournament. How much do you think Russ has changed coach? Uh, He can change coach a lot uh, physically. Coach got a lot of gray hair now. <laughs> Not enough sleep for coach. I'm dreaming about Russ. But you just have to expect that from Russ. Uh, that's why I don't really get mad at him. Because I mean, I expect, I know what to expect from Russ. He's going to take horrible shots. He's going to take, I mean, he's going to gamble on defense. He's going to, you know, but when he's on, you can't, he's on. You know that. You've seen him. I've seen him score 20 straight in a row. And I mean, you just got to expect that from him. You just got to take that in before the game. You got to hit you mentally. That's one thing you got to stick in your mind when you're on the court with him. Like, you know what he's going to do. So just be prepared to, you know, take it all in and rebound any shot he throw up. Shane, what have you thought about the way Gargi's grown the last two years? A little bit. Like, the number one ball handle is Trey Burton. So. I think when we can get the ball out of his hands, we can cause a lot of problems for him. Um, when you guys go real deep on your bench, um, a lot of bench players stepped up for you guys last night. Michigan, same thing kind of happened for them. Do you feel like this is a good matchup sort of between two teams with a lot of depth and a lot of different players? Yeah, you know, two different styles playing against each other and obviously two teams that that's very deep and guys that can contribute and have any, I mean, have big nights for any, you know, any game. Um, it's going to be a great game out there, you know. Um, we know that it's going to be a tough one tomorrow, and, you know, we just can't wait for it. What, what's it like preparing for a team that has, that goes so deep, that it has so many weapons like, like Michigan? Um, you know, we can compare, uh, compare it to our, our situation, you know, because we have guys also. So, I mean, we know that we can't take any guy on that team lightly. I mean, so we just got to um, play them the same way that we play in their starters. I know your press is different than VCU's, but can you take away what they did against Burke and use that? I mean, because Michigan blew out VCU, but they forced Burke to turn the ball over, I think, maybe seven times in the tournament earlier this season. Yeah, I mean, uh, VCU knew that Burke was the number one ball handler for them. And, you know, they was trying to, they was getting it out of his hands. And, you know, but a lot of other guys stepped up for, you know, Michigan to, you know, try to break it and, and help him out. And, you know, they did that. And, you know, they would just, and once they found how to break it, you know, they would steady going with that. Wayne, who do you expect to match up against in this, in this game? Who do you expect to match up against? Uh, Trey? Uh, defensively, who do, you expect, who do you expect to match up against, personally? Oh, me? Yeah. Um, um, it doesn't matter to me. You know, I'm pro um, obviously probably Tim or uh, Glenn uh, Robinson, but I mean, obviously, it doesn't matter at this point. You just got to go out there and play basketball. What, you, what would you see from those two guys? Uh, well, I played with Tim at uh, oh. AAU. So me and Tim known each other for quite some while. And I know that Tim is a great player.